We are back for another round of the selection games. And this time, we're going to cover the three major patterns of natural selection and the different ways they alter the distribution of phenotypes in a population. Before we jump into the three patterns of selection, remember that natural selection increases the prevalence of heritable traits that improve an organism's chance of surviving and reproducing. Because natural selection is a type of evolution, it can only occur if there's variation in the population. In order to describe the type of selection that's occurring, let's first classify varied phenotypes into two broad categories, extreme and intermediate. To make it easy, here at the Selection Games, this nifty way station classifies every gladiator before they head into battle. Extreme phenotypes are those where a given trait measures in at the minimum or maximum possible value for that trait. Extreme phenotypes often involve physical size, like these huge gladiators and teeny gladiators who each have extreme phenotypes for body mass. However, extreme phenotypes don't only pertain to size and other visible attributes. For instance, the gladiators that synthesize the lowest concentration of a certain protein would have an extreme phenotype for protein synthesis. Intermediate phenotypes are just what they sound like, those that have a moderate measurement for a given trait. So these mid-sized gladiators have an intermediate phenotype for body mass, but if they also synthesize a moderate concentration of a protein, they would have an intermediate phenotype for protein synthesis as well. Now, these categories are a bit subjective and entirely relative to what the rest of the population looks like. Nonetheless, they provide a helpful guideline for describing how phenotypes are distributed in a population. Now we're going to take a look at what happens when selection causes the distribution of these phenotypes to change over the course of many generations. The first type of selection is directional selection, which happens at the dire games. Hmm, not sure if I want to play in that one. As you can see, only the tiniest gladiators are heading off to these games, because directional selection occurs when individuals with one extreme phenotype have the highest fitness in the population. Because one extreme phenotype has a reproductive advantage, in each generation it becomes more common, and the average measurement of the trait in the population shifts towards that extreme over time. In the next round of the Dire Games, if there's a different selection pressure, the largest gladiators could be selected instead. I don't envy them. The second type of selection is stabilizing selection, which is represented by the Stab Games, which is another game I don't know if I want to play, honestly. Stabilizing selection occurs when intermediate phenotypes are selected for. Under stabilizing selection, moderate traits become more common each generation, and the average measurement of that trait shifts towards the intermediate values. You can see that only mid-sized gladiators are heading into the stab games. Stabilizing selection is the most commonly observed form of selection, as extreme phenotypes are often disadvantageous for one reason or another. The third and final type of selection is disruptive selection, which happens in the rupture games. Yep, there's a reason we didn't show you inside the stadium. Disruptive selection occurs when intermediate phenotypes are selected against, which is another way of saying that two extreme phenotypes are selected for because both are advantageous. This might seem like an odd pattern of selection, but consider this example. If the tallest individuals are able to sprint past their opponents really fast, they'll survive to reproduce. If the shortest gladiators are so tiny that they're able to sneak past their opponents without being noticed, they'll also live to reproduce. This leaves those poor medium height gladiators who can neither sprint nor sneak. Fewer of them are going to make it to reproduce, and intermediate height is going to be selected against, which is why you don't see any intermediate gladiators heading into the rupture games. Well, that covers the three types of selection, and I think I'm much happier staying outside of this stadium. No stabs for me, thank you. We saw that to enter the selection games, gladiators with a variety of phenotypes have to weigh in to determine if they have an extreme or intermediate phenotype. In the dire games, or directional selection, individuals with one extreme phenotype have the highest fitness, and these phenotypes become more common over subsequent generations. In the stabilizing stab games, intermediate phenotypes are selected for, and moderate traits become more common over generations. Finally, in the rupture games, or disruptive selection, two extreme phenotypes are selected for, and intermediate phenotypes become less and less common over generations. All right, well, I'm going to get out of here before someone puts me on that way station. See you next time.